Hello, and welcome to another Do Life session. I have with me Dr. Michael Phillips, Associate Leader here at Life International. And we're going to have a very interesting conversation, which I believe will be of great benefit to you. These are subjects that others have required or ask us to deal with. Religion versus spirituality. And I know that, Dr. Phillips, you are ready to go. Yes, I am. And I just want us to keep it rolling. Let's make it as lively as it can be and as real as it can be. Yes. So let's go. All right. It's a pleasure to be here with you, HRM, and uh, it's an honor to cover this topic. I think it's a very important topic uh, for this generation to really understand the difference between religion and spirituality. And I can tell you uh, from my experience that this topic is very hot in my household, um, raising my, my four sons in the church, literally from uh, their birth all the way to their adulthood, they have, they have been part of, uh, I would call, a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. And so they need to understand the difference uh, of knowing God in relationship versus religion. And I think this topic is going to help a lot of millennials. It's really going to help a lot of people understand the difference that God can make in relationships. That is absolutely true. Yeah. You know, um, things change and we are in the midst of a change. Yeah. The world is changing quite fast. I remember growing up, what church represent? I remember the term religion, what it also represent. And also spirituality. Today, it looks like the word spirituality has taken preeminent among the words of religion and also faith. Yes. So we have to address it from the context of what younger generation understand when they use the word spirituality. Yeah, when I was growing up, I mean, there was a different understanding when you talk about uh, uh, um, religion. And also when you talk about spirituality. Yeah. Today, the term spirituality is more prominent because younger people are more interested in spirituality than religion. Now, the understanding is religion is from a formation of beliefs, which brings people together or identify people with a cause of faith. Yeah. Now, the young people are more interested in spirituality in the sense that they don't believe being religious is that important. But to attain personal spirituality is what matters to them. Yes. And they find spirituality in anything that gives them comfort or anything that is of meaning to them, which answers questions that the traditional religious churches or traditional religion has not been able to address. But I think from our perspective and from where we sit, Religion is important. Spirituality is very important. But how to mix the two and bring the true meaning yeah. of uh, uh, religion and spirituality. The Bible talks about true religion mm -hmm. and also talks about being spiritual. So you cannot take the one against the other or pitch the one against the other. They are all as important. So I would say that our children today, their concept and their understanding of what we consider faith is a little different. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, my sons practice a spiritual lifestyle, um, and I watch them. <laughs> However, uh, it, they they are not, I would say, focused on the religious aspect so much, mm -hmm. meaning going to church every mm -hmm. Sunday or mm -hmm. going through any type of ritual mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. However, you know, they believe in God, they pray, and they focus on making sure that their hearts are clean and that and they treat people right. So they, they have a basic tenet of faith that says, if I treat you right as a person, and if I respect you as a human being, and if I love God and I love people, then I'm a spiritual person. And as, as far as going to church every Sunday, um, not so much. And as you said, the young people are not interested in the uh, everyday um, experience the way we grew up. I would say the way you grew up as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm a couple, I'm one generation removed from you. <laughs> and uh, so I think that it's very important to understand that even though it's different, it's still 
is a requirement, though, that we understand who God is and our, our relationship with him as far as what we do, as far as looking to heaven for our help, looking to heaven for our strength, looking to heaven for our, for our future and our hope, and understanding that we're nothing without our spiritual relationship with him. That is true. Yes. Now, I mean, it's very interesting because, you see, our children, the reason why they don't like religion is because they see religion as organized by man. Mm. So they call it organized religion. Yeah. Whilst they consider spirituality as a personal thing. Right. That I have a personal relationship with God, and that's more important to me than being part of organized religion. And to a point, they have, uh, they have a point, because what we know as organized religion have not only set rules of engagement for those who follow its beliefs, but some of them have been so rigid, mm. some of them have been also used to do harm, all in the name of religion. Yeah. So young people see things a little differently. I mean, you can be spiritual, but you still need fellowship. Yes. And going to church, to me, is not religion or religious. Going to church is actually extending your spirituality in the midst of those who share the same faith and building yourself up. But the young generation, they are actually in search. They are looking for God. They are looking for reality. And they are looking for things that actually deal with the human heart. They are more sensitive to the needs of people around them. Yes. And they tend to be more uh, uh, project-oriented. If they see a cause that they believe in, they throw themselves completely into it. Unlike us, we may be religious and we may set rules. Don't do this, don't do this, don't go here, don't come <laughs> here. You know, but with them, they see it as all hindrances. Yeah. But there, sh there should be a common ground where we can help actually bridge that gap, where we would actually see spirituality and gathering of church as important also. Yeah. And also to get them involved in church, I mean, they don't want to come and sit around and yawn when everything exactly. is boring. Yeah. I mean, and also speaking a language that they can relate to. If we speak a language which is above them or a language that they cannot relate to, then we lose them. So right. we have to be able to understand that to bring faith and make it vibrant mm -hmm. for millennials to embrace, then we should at least understand their language and also make sure that they are participants and not just observers. Yes. Millennials don't like to observe. That's they right. are action people. Yes. They believe in action. They see religion as man's organization, which does not call for action only from the top. Hmm. But they believe in grassroots. They want the top to be as effective as the grassroots or the bottom. They look at all aspects. So spirituality is something we have to consider and talk about, but we cannot ignore the importance of church. Church is so critical. So how can we express, and I really believe in coming together, even though we have this environment now where we, we are asked to be a part, but it's so important for us to come together and, and share our spirituality and get involved and, and become effective, a part of an effective community of believers. How can we involve each other more and really communicate and express our spirituality as a group? To be able to get people together, you have to let them understand and know that your gathering is not going to be one way. If people are just coming to hear and not participate or get involved, usually don't show any interest. Mm. We have to create an atmosphere that is conducive for participation. Oh, that's good. And if people can feel part of something, then anytime you call, they will show up. Again, in the midst of COVID-19, we recently experienced the killing of this young man, George Floyd. Floyd yeah. People ignored protocols, the social distancing. Why? Because of a cause. When people feel they are part of something, they will participate. 
So for us to really create the atmosphere where church becomes church again, mm. then we should make sure that we are not only speaking from the top, but we are actually addressing matters that are all critical importance. The church have to do more than just talking about here to heaven. We have to talk about here and in between before heaven. The millennials are more interested in here and in between, whilst those of us of older generation are concerned about here and there. But they are more practical mm -hmm. in their thinking and also in their reflection. So for us to create a church that will represent all, then we should involve and also address the matters or issues that concerns them and also allow them to share their experience with us how they see the world through the lens of faith. Because if you can do it through the lens of faith, then it's a win-win for everybody. Wow, that's incredible. And I think you, you're absolutely right. If we can make this an interactive experience mm -hmm. where everyone's participating and they, they know it's for a reason, it's, there's a cause, there's a purpose, and we all have that group understanding, then we mobilize irregardless. And we can go beyond the four walls into the community make an impact, and change our world. That's what we call to do. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Do you, you, you notice that um, some time ago, the church was so judgmental and very dogmatic. You are only considered a Christian when you go to church. And the church turned so many people away. There were those who couldn't go to church because they didn't have clothes to wear. There are those who didn't go to church because they didn't have money to give. And there are those who didn't go to church because they felt guilty any time they went. Because they were preached at and not given the hope and address the concerns and at least help lift their burdens. Not everybody that comes to our church is looking to go to heaven for that moment. But we cannot be assured that many people who come to church are coming to hear the word of God that can help sustain them Monday through Saturday. Yes, sir. And in the midst of that, salvation can be presented and they will embrace the message. But when they come and they have to feel guilty or worse than coming, then of course they'll be afraid of the church. Another thing that I'll say when we talk about spirituality, is that Jesus demonstrated true spirituality. The people that spent more time with him were not the ones who went to the organized church. They were the outcast. But he came with a message that involves spirituality. And he made them spiritual to understand that God is a spirit. Yes. And wherever the spirit of God is, there's liberty and not bondage. So if we are going to touch our world, then let's not use spirituality as a guilty ploy to get people to go to heaven. But proclaim a message of hope and the assurance that God loves them and God has a better future for them. So between here and there, that's what we call in between. Yes. God loves them and God will help them to be able to live victoriously so they can practice spirituality in their daily walk and also come to church and fellowship with other like-minded believers. Wow. So that means Sunday is, is just a celebration. Sunday celebration. Yeah. Sunday celebration. Sunday is actually celebration. Yeah. It's a form of giving general instruction, celebrating, thanking God, and rejoicing in Him, and getting the tools to survive in the, for the week. Oh, I love it. I love it. You just gave a powerful blueprint for where we need to go from here because as in the midst of all of this, we need hope, we need inspiration, we need, we need fellowship, we need to understand that God is real and he's relevant month, Sunday through Sunday, not just one day a week, but seven days a week. We have the word, we have the wisdom, and we need to be able to apply it in a practical way where we can lift ourselves up and lift others up. That is absolutely right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. That's the blueprint. Yeah. So religion is not dead, but religion 
coupled with spirituality can take us to where we need to go. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, like you said earlier, religion as a, as a rule mm -hmm. of what not to do has not worked. But spirituality, governed by discipline that comes from the Word of God, allows us to work every day and, and be, become stronger. Exactly. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yes, sir. And if you notice, too, Christianity is all about relationship. Mm -hmm. Having a relationship with Jesus Christ, having a relationship with God, and having a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Yes. It's all about relationship. People respond to relationship than responding to orders and instructions. Yeah. When people have relationship, then giving orders is easy to follow. But when you don't have relationship, your orders will be considered dictatorship mm. or domineering. But when there's a relationship, people don't have problems taking orders. So we have to first introduce our spirituality, which is Christ, to the world and explain that his intent was to establish relationship with man. Yeah. And it's all about relationship. Yeah. Once there's relationship, you get the best out of everyone. It's all about relationship. Oh, I love that. Relationship over religion. Relationship or religion. <laughs> Relationship or religion. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. It, it, mm. it is. It, it's so warming to understand that I don't have to be afraid to obey, to follow, mm. to to have a guy when that guy loves me mm. and when that guy wants the best for me. Mm. I think that's the message. That's a true message. Now, I, um, I, I take relationship with God as a father and his children. A father who has waited too long to have a child will never maltreat a child. A father who has waited too long to have a child would groom the child and will give the best of his love for the child. I'm not even talking about the mother yet. I'm talking about the father. A father who has everything, who has waited long enough for a child, will make sure that a child is in line for inheritance. Huh. That father will not be walking around with Cain looking for every slight opportunity to beat the child up. That father is not looking for opportunity to make the child feel guilty, mm. but will train the child in the way that a child will go. So when the child becomes an adult, the child will not depart from the knowledge that has been imparted to him. We have to understand that when you talk about religion, it's about judgment, do's and don'ts. But when you talk about spirituality in Christ, you're talking about a heavenly father who loves his children wow. and has great plans for his children. And the father loves his children, that the children can approach him anytime because they have a relationship. A father would never scream at the child who gets up in the middle of the night to even come and wake him up. God will never, ever extend deaf ears to us when we call him. Yeah. And he says, call me in the days of trouble. When your night seems to fall and the days seem to be too long, you can call on God. This is not religion. Yeah. This is relationship. This is true spirituality. That I am, and my father, we have a relationship. I can go to my father, and this is what we have to tell, and this is how we have to engage the millennials or the young people to know who God is. Yes, it's not about you're going to go to hell. What about reminding them that they are on their way to heaven? <laughs> yes. But they should not miss out the opportunity of making their destination real. If we want to justify the importance or justify spirituality through relationship then we should talk about heaven first before we talk about hell. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I love this. This is so, so comforting to know that we have a father who loves us, who cares for us, have an inheritance for us, who understands us, who, who want the best for us. You know, as a, as a young man growing up without a father in the home, to hear a message such as this, gives me the confidence to become the best I can be. 
and I appreciate that. It's my joy. And, you know, um, my personal relationship with God stems from my relationship with my own biological father. Mm. I understand my father because he was teaching me principles, teaching me things that will never change, things that are constant in life. So I approached God that way. And I understood when I read earlier on that if earthly parents who are wicked knows how to give good gifts to their own children, how much more our superior father, our heavenly father. So my approach to faith is a relationship. It's not based on what am I doing wrong for which my father is going to get me. But I can't wait to see my dad to tell him what I just did. I can't wait to see my dad and just talk to him and hear what he says about this. The greatest moments of my life growing up is when I sit with my daddy and I tell him what I've done in a day. And he's telling me what he did when he was young and give me direction. I couldn't wait to tell my father everything. I wasn't afraid to talk to my dad. I look forward to talking to him. And that also helps and prepares you even to learn how to pray. Because I'm talking to my father. And because I love dad, and has so much to tell me and to- so much to show me, I can't wait till daddy came home. I can't wait to, till I go into the room to talk to him and dad. Because I know he will hear me. This is relationship. And this is spirituality. And this is what the young people are trying to find. Yes, sir. They're looking for this. And we have to help them to find the right thing in the right way. If we can help others to know that it's all about relationship, which is our spirituality, and not try to be religion and pushing it down people's throat, I believe the church will be a different place. It will be relevant, active, and many will come into the house of God without running away from the church. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, It's just amazing. Can you do me a favor? And I know this is going to be a blessing to so many others. And I just, I just sense that there's a lot of people with my background. You grew up with a father in a home who loved you, cared for you. And my background was, you know, I saw the opposite. Is it possible? And, and would you just grant us uh, uh, the privilege of praying and speaking into uh um, pe- uh, others' lives who need that loving touch, that that hug, like your words just bring a hug. You know, <laughs> it, it just gives that hug. And I'm so glad for the, our relationship because it just brought so much healing <laughs> into my life as well. Can you just speak to um, th- this generation, those who are looking for a father who need that love? Thank you. Yes, for those of you watching, may I say to you, there is a father whose love is so strong and compelling. There's a father who cares and who is looking forward to embracing you and calling you his own. If you are wondering and you are actually in doubt and you are asking questions like, is anyone out there who can be like a father to me and care for me and show me love, and affirm or validate me, I will say to you, yes, there's one. And there's one that I'm about to recommend to you that I've known. And I tell you, know him is nothing but the greatest blessing. He's Jesus. He's Jesus. His name is Jesus. He loves you irrespective of who you are. And he wants you just the way you are, so he can transform you to be the way he will want you to be which will be of a blessing to you. He loves you. And I'm here to say to you, I also love you. And just as I'm expressing this love to you, his love for you is greater than mine. And if you can give him your heart and just take him in with trust, you will never be disappointed. He'll be the father you've always needed. He loves you. And he died just for you. So you will have eternal life. His name again is Jesus. Get him in. Let him in. And you will never 
be the same again. Thank you very much for watching. And on behalf of Life International, we wish you God's very best. It is our hope, our prayer, and desire to inspire you regularly and make sure that you succeed in every area of your life. We would like to give you an opportunity to contribute to Life International so that our broadcast can reach many more around the world. Continue watching, share us, and mention us to all of your friends. Thank you so much, and God bless you.